And what's going on, you guys? It's me, your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess, where we talk about celebrity gossip, hot topics, and all things reality TV-based. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful Friday, and I intend on doing the exact same. I'm filming this right before I go to work, so I don't really think that this video is going to be that long, because we only got three topics to really get into today. So we don't really have no church announcements either for today, so we're going to go ahead and get into what we're here to talk about, okay? Now, let's get into the very first um, topic here here, and that is Mr. Mayno. Now, Mayno was on the radio, and Mayno was saying that people were reaching, um, people were reaching um, about some of the things that were, some of the things that they've said about Diddy's parties, and he wants people to shut that F up, talking about parties that they'll never have access to. So we're going to go ahead and get into what Mayno said, and then um, after that, you know, I'm going to give y'all my opinion, of course, on the situation, and then we'll be right back. So let's get into it, y'all. Let's, let me pull this up for you guys. Give me one second. Let me pull it up. Okay, there we go. Here we go, y'all. Everybody in this, in this business was, was going to Diddy parties. We just was at a Diddy party at the net. That shit was crazy. Uh -oh. Now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, nobody talking about oh going to a Diddy party. What like you ever been invited to a party or any party? Like every top chick with that was from the city or Philly or everywhere was there. Like what I mean, it was a party. I think y'all 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 reaching with some of the shit y'all talking about it'd be the that be so delusional they never been invited to no party never had access to no party running around talking about don't let me find a picture of you in a diddy party shut the shut up shut the fun. listen diddy had a party at the oh, net God. recently like a couple of months ago when they dropped that album that was a good party I don't know what you. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if Homeland Security is reaching, like y'all, just go for anything. But listen, sit back and watch what happens. Then that's all I can tell you. I ain't here to say what. I'm not here to go one way or another. Or another. You talking about parties that y'all over here talking about parties and events that y'all never was invited in. Y'all never had access to. Y'all never been involved. You're sitting around in your house or in your basement or your mom's basement or at work judging that you ain't never going to be in the, in, the, in the company of. What we really talking about? You throwing stones and sitting in houses that's easily to be broken. But, what, but we, who you judge? What? What are we talking about? Everybody in this in this business was. was all right, you guys. So that was Mayno um, basically giving his point of view on um, everybody talking about the Diddy parties and everybody giving their opinions about the Diddy parties and how he feels about that. Um, here's my thing about Mayno. It's so funny that all the people that's defending Diddy are all abusers and have abuse allegations of their own. You know, Mayno has had those allegations about him, too. So, of course, he's going to come out and, you know, be one of Diddy's do um, boy toys and defend him. It's 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 not... It's nothing new. They always do that. And then, you know, they be so defensive when um, the people have opinions about, you know, S.A. and things like that. What I don't understand is why do these men, I, I say this all the time, I say this probably in every little video that I do about Diddy or any situation dealing with S.A. Why is it that men don't speak out for any other situation, but when it comes down to D.V., when it comes down to S.A., they have so much to say and they don't want nobody to talk about it? Tell me why. And I see this all the time. They can speak out about some gay shit, but they can't speak out about another man putting his hands on a woman. They cannot speak on um, a man, you know, assaulting another woman, whether it be uh, physically, sexually. They can't. They they, they don't want to say nothing about that. Like I didn't see nobody come out when um, when Emily B uh, came out and said that Fabulous had knocked the teeth out of her mouth. I didn't see no men coming out to to support her. I didn't see no men um, saying anything. What we did get was little mama, her male identified as come out and, you know, say what she said to defend Fab. That's all we got. But God forbid a woman comes out and give her story about going to a Diddy party or whatever and, and or somebody had their experiences, then y'all want to say something. It's like, man, no, shut the fuck up. 
Because don't nobody really give a fuck about what you're saying at all. Shut up. Because me personally, I wouldn't want to go to no Diddy party. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just me being real. I wouldn't want to go to no damn Diddy party anyway. So y'all can miss me with it, honestly. I wouldn't. But that's neither here nor there. I just needed a reason to just drag Mayno because I don't like him anyway. Shout out to K Michelle. Anyway, we've been we about to move on to the next story, and that is Scrappy and Bambi. It's like the gift that keeps on giving because these two just don't know how to leave each other the fuck alone, honey. But we're about to go ahead and get into it. So this is the this is the situation. So Scrappy's ex-wife Bambi accuses him of violating their divorce settlement for allowing his girlfriend to post photos of their kids online and also wants an increase on child support. Okay. So let's let's look at it. It looks like Scrappy didn't put the pause on the, on the divorce settlement. Had he read it, he'd know that his significant other is not supposed photos of the children he shares with his ex-wife, Bambi, on social media. According to Radar Online, Bambi has now filed paperwork to change their custody um, deal for multiple reasons. In June of 2023, they agreed that they should they would have joint custody. OK, legal custody at that with Bambi having primary custody and Scrap having visitation. Bambi says since Scrappy has failed to bring the children to school on time, she wants the schedule modified so she can be the one to bring them to school. Bambi says that Scrap is currently paying 400, no, 4,800 a month in child support. However, due to the kids starting private school, she wants that amount increased. As for Scrappy's little girlfriend posting the kids, she asked that Scrappy be found in contempt for alleged violations of their divorce agreement. She said that the deal stated intimate partners are restricted from posting any content involving the minor children on any form of social media platforms. Now, Scrappy has rekindled his relationship with... Um, with what is it with um with his other baby mama Erica Dixon? It's unclear if that's who Bambi is referring to in these documents. Okay, now I'm gonna say this. Now, if that was in the custody agreement that nobody else, no, now one of they you know significant others should be posting photos of their kids, then y'all need to follow the the agreement. I mean. I know that a lot of people want to be mad at Bambi, but I do feel like if that was in the agreement, then that's what's in the agreement and you need to stick to that. You know what I'm saying? If you're not following the guidelines of the agreement, then you do need to be in contempt about that situation. I'm just being real. You know what I mean? Um, but what's so crazy about it is that Scrappy is the one that's violating the divorce settlement and y'all making this about Eric Dixon. Y'all sitting up here talking about she's always been jealous of Erica. She's always been jealous of Erica. Even if that, even if that is true, this divorce settlement ain't got a damn thing to do with Erica. And on top of that, y'all want to, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I'm so sick of everybody putting Erica on this big ass pedestal and shit like that. When she looks just like Bambi right now, she looks like a complete idiot sitting up here fighting over Scrappy, you know, um, all out here in the limelight with Scrappy, you know, possibly getting back with Scrappy, all that other bullshit. She just look crazy as fuck to me. And I'll never, I'll never be on that train with, with people saying that, um, that Erica is shitting on Bambi or, you know, Bambi is jealous of Erica and things like that. At the end of the fucking day, Erica looks fucking crazy. Anytime a nigga call you Wesley Snipes, called you a basic baby mama, said all this crazy ass shit about you. And I get it. People move on, you know, Scrappy and Erica got a kid together and things like that. So I get that they moved on, but all, all that shit and y'all calling Bambi jealous all because she's doing what she's supposed to do with this damn divorce settlement. No, I don't see nothing wrong with that. If he's in, if he didn't do what he was supposed to do, he needs to be in contempt. I don't understand what the big deal is. Y'all got a divorce thing, so y'all need to stand by that. Because I really feel like if baby ass was sitting up here not following the rules, Scrappy would be right back in court doing the same damn thing. Come on now, y'all. Y'all got to be real. Y'all gots to be real about the situation. Y'all do. Never mind the fact that y'all love Erica. Scrappy ain't doing the right thing. 
But this is what people do on social media. Like they bypass the facts of it all and then they just want to go on and, you know. But to each is the fuck on though. We're going to move on to the last topic and that is Latasha Scott, Mona Scott, and Escape Honey. Okay, so straight now, earlier this week or maybe last week, whichever one, my good friend, House of Aaron, he was one of the first to put out there that um, Latasha Scott was about to sue Escape for copyright infringement. He did put that video out last week, I think late last week, early this week. He didn't really have the facts to go along with it, but he said that's what he heard in the streets. Then later on down the line, Michelle Brown from the Straight from the A, she put out an article with the actual, um, she put out the article with the actual, uh, what is it? Actual papers in there. So this is what the article states. It says, another day, another escape battle. It's only been a week since the 90s girl group, which consists of Latasha Scott, Tamika Tiny Harris, Tamika Scott, and Tiny uh, I mean, and Candy Burris officially announced that they were headed on a, na- a nationwide to a co-headlining with SWV produced by Mona Scott's live uh, Mona Scott's uh, management company in Live Nation. Fans of the popular girl group were left wondering why only three members appeared in the promo. Perhaps Latasha Scott's attorney letters can provide some clarity. Now, Latasha Scott, through her lawyer, Laron E. Rogers, is claiming that Live Nation, Mona Scott's um, Moni, uh, oh God, I cannot pronounce that. But anyway, Mona Scott's company is interfering with her rights as one of the trademark owners of the Escape brand. The letter notes that Scott was completely blindsided by news that Escape had signed a contract for a nationwide tour without her. Latasha was surprised to learn that Live Nation, who's Escape, um, whom Escape has contract- contracted to perform on numerous occasions, contracted individuals, and is publicly advertising the Escape mark to promote a live musical performance for a series of concerts during the Queens of R&B tour without Latasha's consent. In addition to failing to obtain consent, you have also failed to even reach out to Latasha to agree on financial terms for the use of the mark, as well as discuss her performance. She further notes that Mona Sky Young is totally in on it, being that she of all people was aware of the trademark situation being that Latasha had to agree to you to its use in the past now Mona's management company entertainment company rather who appears whom appears to be co a co-promoter of the Queens of R&B tour has specific knowledge of Latasha's ownership and rights to the mark because Mona's entertainment company specifically obtained Latasha's consent to use the mark for a television series produced by Mona's entertainment company. Also being as though Mona Scott Young also served as escape management in the past, Latasha feels the slight was intentional. In addition, Mona Scott Young Previously managed the music group Escape, we can come to no other conclusion to believe that Ms. Young and her entertainment company's conduct to be con- to be um, intentional with this specific intent to interfere with the rights of Latasha. Okay. Now, some say that Latasha has a case. Right? Right. But we're going to continue on because I see there's more in this um, article here. Latasha's attorney is asking that Mona Scott Young contact them within five days to secure the proper licensing for the use of the trademark. For the record, the trademark was secured by Latasha and her sister Tamika Scott during the time period that Candy Burrs was adamant about not joining the group. Since that time, a whole lot has happened and however, it's been made clear throughout the drama, it was never Latasha's intent to leave the group, only to take a break to pursue other interests. On a related note, Latasha sent um, a similar letter to Live Nation stating that Latasha was surprised to learn that Live Nation, whom Escape has contracted to perform on numerous occasions, contracted with individuals, is publicly advertising an Escape mark to promote a live musical performance at Lovers and Friends Festival, May the 4th, 2024 Festival in Las Vegas, Nevada, without Latasha's consent. In addition to failing to obtain consent, you have to also, you have also failed to even reach out to Latasha to agree to financial terms for the mark for the use of the mark for this performance as well to discuss her performance woo child latasha ain't playing how long will it take for candy to speak on this now y'all know that you know michelle brown got a bias so i'm just gonna laugh at that part (laughs) but anyway this is i know a lot of people feel like latasha got a case here and in some aspects she probably does right 
But this is my issue with this whole thing. They've been doing shows without Latasha for the last year. She ain't said nothing about the mark and all this time. So why is it now that she's gotten, now that she has so much to say about what's going on with them using the name Escape? Like, what's the big deal now? I don't, I don't really understand. I don't get it. Like, what, what what's the what's the issue with it now? You know, that's my whole point. What's the issue with it now? Why do you feel the need to sue them now for that? Is it because you ain't on the tour? Latasha decided to leave that group, even though she said it was never her intent to leave the group, but she left the group. I don't care. She left the group for that weak ass gospel music that she was trying to release. She'd been doing everything outside of that group. She showed her ass on a reality show. And that's just that. So now she wants a piece of the pie now. And that's just it, you know? And that's the truth. She wants a piece of the pie. But like I said, like, even though probably legally she probably does have a case, but I'm just over Latasha because. I just feel like they've been they've been using that name all year to perform and you ain't said nothing. But now that they're going on a nationwide tour and you know there's a lot of money involved with that. Now you want to sit up here and, and do all this extra shit. But OK. I don't give a fuck about Latasha, though, because so my so my opinion going to always be what it is. And we cannot we can you know, I know y'all going to try to come up in here and make this shit about candy. Cause that's what y'all do. Y'all like to, you know, y'all make her, you know, God <laughs> make everything on her. Well, Latasha put escape in this predicament. You know what I mean? In my opinion, because she decided to lead a group. She did. She decided to lead this group. She decided to move on with her gospel music. And that's just that. But we're going to see how this shit pans out. Okay. We're going to see how it pans out because her sister also owns the name too. So in my opinion, I feel like Tamika owns the name. So maybe that's why they continued on with it because Tamika also owns the name. But we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, y'all. But with that being said, y'all, that's pretty much all that we got. So let's move on and talk about what we got. So K-Star has a brand new record out now called Car Goblin. It's available right now. So make sure you guys go and pick it up. And um, also, Bando has a new record out now called The Nasty Remix, which is available now. And it features Tay-G, Alunda the Blonde, and The Hood Holes. Make sure you guys support both K-Star and Bando. Not because K-Star, not because they're because they're both independent artists and not only that because k-star is my bestie and bando is my baby daddy okay so make sure you guys support them both so with that being said you guys this be your boy scotty by nature tv be sure to like rate comment subscribe share this video and also click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops and if you want to follow me on any form of social media my twitter my instagram and my tiktok will be down below with that being said you guys your boys about here until my next video i'll talk to you guys a little bit later bye y'all